November the 22nd, 2003. Baghdad Airport is home to the American troops in Iraq, and the US Air Force flies in daily to supply the troops and to help rebuild the country. The area around the airport is surrounded by terrorists and is therefore patrolled by Apache attack helicopters to eliminate any threat. Today, at Baghdad Airport, there's only one civilian plane, a DHL Airbus A300 cargo aircraft. DHL started flying to Baghdad six months earlier as they had won a contract to deliver the military's mail. Today, the plane is scheduled to fly to Bahrain. The 24-year-old aircraft is owned by European Air Transport doing business as DHL Express. In command of the flight is Captain Eric Genot, a 38-year-old Belgian pilot. He received his promotion to Captain the Airbus A300 just one year ago. In the right seat is 29-year-old First Officer Steve Mickelson. He is also Belgian and had gotten married just three months ago. In the seat behind the Captain and First Officer sits Flight Engineer Mario Raphael. He is from Scotland and lives together with his wife and children. The captain has 3,300 total flight hours, more than half of them logged in the A300. The first officer has 1,275 hours of flight experience and the flight engineer has 13,400 flight hours. A couple of miles away, two French news reporters from Paris Match are meeting some of Baghdad's terrorists to cover a news story. The armed rebels took possession of many weapons after the Iraqi army fell. Among those weapons, heat-seeking surface-to-air missiles, rendering the airspace at and around the airport extremely dangerous. As he receives clearance for takeoff, the captain, who is the pilot flying, sets full power, and a few seconds later, the aircraft begins its takeoff roll. The flight crew is unaware that just a few miles from the airport, a terrorist group has its own plan for the aircraft. Since the aircraft is taking off from a hostile environment, the pilots decide to perform a steep climb in order to reduce exposure to ground attacks. The flight crew performs a steep climb to get to a safe altitude faster. However, their efforts don't pay off because at about 8,000 feet, a surface-to-air missile struck the rear of the left wing between the engine and the wingtip. The warhead damages trailing edge surfaces of the wing structure and causes a fire. All three hydraulic systems, hydraulic system green, blue and yellow, lose pressure and, as a result, flight controls are disabled. Without hydraulics, it is impossible to control the ailerons, rudder or elevators. The aircraft begins to pitch rapidly up and down in a roller coaster phagoid, oscillating between a nose up and a nose down position. The plane begins to climb steeply, and the climb is followed by a nose dive. This pattern repeats itself repeatedly. Both the captain and first officer think they can perhaps regain some control by using the engine throttles. Increasing engine power should cause the plane to climb, decreasing it should cause it to lose altitude. Increasing power on the left engine only should make the aircraft turn to the right, and increasing power on the right engine only should roll it to the left. This way of flying an aircraft had never been taught in training. The pilots must figure out themselves how quick the aircraft reacts to their actions and where the limits are.
In about 10 minutes of experimentation, the crew learns to manage turns, climbs and descents. After a meandering trajectory, the pilots execute a right turn and initiate a descent path to Baghdad airport. However, there's another problem. Since the missile hit the left wing, a part of that wing is gone and this creates more drag, causing the aircraft to slowly bang to the left. Despite all the trouble, however, the pilots' actions are successful as they can now see the airport ahead of them. As the aircraft approaches the airport, the captain tells his flight engineer to lower the landing gear. However, since the landing gear also uses a hydraulic system, he has to manually crank it open and let gravity do the rest. The flight engineer successfully extends the landing gear, but lowering the landing gear creates a lot of drag and destabilizes the entire balance of the plane. The one thing the flight crew tried to figure out this whole time and successfully achieved is now gone. The nose of the plane raises itself quickly and the plane is losing speed fast. Even though his plane is nearly at stall speed, the captain brings the throttles back to idle position in order for the nose to come down. If he loses too much speed, however, the plane will fall out of the sky and crash. Luckily, the nose lowers and the speed starts to drop. Then, the co-pilot spots another problem. They're too close to the runway and they're too high to attempt a landing. They must turn around, fly away from the airport again for 23 miles and come back. The only problem with this is that time is running out and the fire on the left wing is causing it to burn away. After almost 15 minutes, the plane is back on final, this time at the right altitude. However, at about 400 feet, turbulence upsets the aircraft balance and the right wing dips. With thrust adjustments, the roll is controlled, but the aircraft touches down off the runway centerline. The flight engineer immediately deploys full reverse thrust, but the aircraft veers off the paved runway. It runs through rough soft ground and stops after about 3000 feet.